Hi, I'm Michelle and welcome back to another Topical Muse. Our topic of this week is Fatal Frame, brought to you by our muse, me. It's October and it's almost Halloween, so I thought we should do something a little bit horror themed. And before we continue, I'll be doing a lot of spoilers for the first three Fatal Frame series. You have been warned. When I was young, I stumbled across the PlayStation 2 game Fatal Frame, and it quickly became my favorite horror game. I tried Silent Hill, didn't really get it. I tried Resident Evil, not my kind of thing. They're both scary, don't get me wrong, but it just... I didn't connect well with them. On the other hand, Fail Frame made me fall in love with the story and the character that was in the three, at least in the first three games that I played. The premise of the game is that there is a hell gate kind of place that needs to be sealed by a certain ritual every few years. Usually something happened with the priestess or the shrine maiden or the person that is responsible to seal the gate, therefore unleashing these terrible malice and killing all the innocent people that happen to stumble across the place that the game is set in. So the character that we play will come in and try to fix things that went wrong and using the camera obscura banishes away all evil. I personally love a good gore. The kind of gore that has a purpose, not just trying to be mean and scary and oh, like in the Saw movies. This game has a lot of purposeful gore. For example, in the first game, in order to find out who will be the next Shrine Maiden, they have to play a demon tag, which is something like a hide and seek. But the person who is doing the seeking or the demon will have to go through a certain ritual. She is forcefully put on a blinding mask where instead of a hole in the eye, they have stakes, like really thick stakes to stab her in the eye. So she's now blind with blood running in her eyes. And then the shrine maiden herself will need to be sacrificed by being pulled in five different parts which is two hands, two feet, and her head and the rope that eventually pull her apart will be the one that is used to seal the gate. Of course, Shrine Maidens aren't supposed to have an attachment to this world so ever since she is chosen from the Demon Tag game, she will have to stay indoors for 3,669 days in order to not have any attachment to the world in order for her to like, oh, you have to die. Yeah, sure, totally. It's not like I enjoy the world because I'm just locked in a small room for 300, no, 3,669 days. But unfortunately, she fell in love with a guest that happens to come by and therefore started to feel like, I don't want to die. I want to live with this guy because he talks to me and I don't have friends to talk to for 3,669 days. So I like him now. The ritual failed because she had feelings and therefore created a malice to spread and kill everybody in that mansion. The third game also have a similar love destroys the ritual. In which case the tattooed priestess gets tattooed that are pretty much like the pain that other people feel. So she is absorbing their pain by getting tattooed all over her body. But of course, it's painful. So what they do is impale her and leave her to die. But she didn't die because someone will be singing a lullaby and therefore she will forever sleep with the pain. But she'll be okay because she's sleeping. Therefore she won't open the rift of the calamity and the malice and everything. But of course, something happened, the priestess fell in love and then she saw her lover being killed in front of her, therefore causing like this uncontrollable pain and unlocks the stuff and bad stuff happens. The first and the third game kind of have the same, I fell in love so I didn't become a great sacrifice. But the second game is, I think, has the best ritual ever. When a twin is born, the younger twin who in that village is considered the older twin, must strangle the older twin. So what happens is the remaining twin will have this red mark on her neck because when you strangle someone, well, at least in the game, when you strangle them, the twin, you kind of do it this way. So it's like, oh, butterfly, can you see butterfly? <laughs> so she now has a remaining 
kind of a proof that, yay, she succeeded in killing her twin, so now she will forever be reminded by seeing this giant red mark on her neck. However, the dead twin turns into a crimson butterfly, which is believed to be like the guardian deity of said village. Of course, when you kill your twin, you will be overcome with immense grief and sometimes traumatic feeling which causes your hair to turn white, which is what happens to most of the remaining twins that are still alive. But there's also a twin that succeeded and they were only 11 years old. 11 years old child gets to kill her twin. Wow, what a twisted mind you have, Makoto Shibata. Can you imagine being told to kill your twin with your hands while, while these men like stomping their staff in unison and telling you to like kill, kill, kill your twins and then after that we'll throw her body down the abyss so that no malice will happen and all the villagers will be safe for another 10 years until we have another twin to kill. So Fatal Frame, this video game managed to spawn a cancelled 2003 movie, a movie that actually came out based on a novel by Eiji Otsuka and they also have a planned movie that has been announced since 2014 but it also have spawned a manga series by Seimaru Amagi being illustrated by Hakus. There's also a 3DS game which is kind of using an AR book and then you like see through the DS and like a ghost which is pretty cool but it's quite short so meh. There's also a novel that is written in the point of view of the first protagonist brother which died in the game but get this the sister eventually will have a baby a daughter with her dead brother that she happens to create whilst she was in the dreamland which is kind of the curse of the third game and said daughter will appear as a playable character in the fifth game Anything is possible in Fatal Frame! You, what? What? You like your brother? Huh. Well, that's definitely scoffed upon in the living world. But if your brother's dead, then it's totally fine. None, no one's the wiser. What? What is it? None is the wiser. No one else the wiser. Nobody knows who the dad is. You can say like, ah, oh, it's some dude. Ah, oh, it's a sperm bank. But hey, it's the dead brother. So dead people. <laughs> Let's talk about soundtrack. Ever since the second game, all the way to the fifth game, there's one particular singer-songwriter called Tsukiko Amano, now known as Tsuki Amano, has written at least one theme song for the game. For the second game, she wrote a song called Cho, which means butterfly because <laughs> remember? Yeah. And then the third game, she wrote a song called Koe, which means voice. For the fourth game, she wrote a song called Zero no Choretsu, which before it was named that was actually known as Just Call My Name. And in the fifth game, she wrote the song called In This Cage. Basically, she wrote a lot of songs for a Fatal Frame series. And I heard or read that if they ever want to make another series, they're still going to work together again. But for now, I'm going to combine two of her songs, which is Cho and Koe, and then put them together, and I shall present to you as one beautiful, cohesive song. Enjoy! Oh 
favorite PS horror game? Were you even born to play PS2 or PS1? What would you do if you're ever trapped in a haunted house? Are you a Fatal Frame fan as well? Were you able to play without getting scared? Did you manage to collect all the ghost lists? Did you manage to collect all the costume, including the swimsuit one? Did you play with a walkthrough? <laughs> Because I did. There are so many things that I want to talk about Fatal Frame, but unfortunately it'll just be too long and I'm not exactly a video game reviewer. 
but I just really enjoy Fatal Frame and I hope that one day I get to play at least the fourth game or the fifth game, but I don't know, it's for Wii and it's Wii U and then the fourth game is never localized, so I have to use other means to play it. And the fifth game is in Wii U. There's not a lot of games that I like in Wii U and I don't want to buy a Wii U for the sake of playing the game so I guess I have to only watch Let's Play. But anyway, I hope you like the song and as usual, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and what have you. And if, and if you have any suggestions on what topical music you'd like me to do or sing, meh, don't forget to leave it in the comments or message me somewhere, somehow. I have social media, you can check in the link of the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, see you next week.